Hey friends, what's up? Kaz here. Welcome back to another server amateur or bucket spigot plug-in tutorial. If you're joining for the first time, feel free to subscribe button because I do these every week. If you have a suggestion of one you'd like me to do, feel free to comment that in the jibbles below. That would be the comment section for you new people. If you find this video helpful, please leave a like because that helps me out for helping you guys out. Also, like if you like the green screen because it's really cool. And this week has been requested by The Beast, Anthony, CJ, Missigno, no, Z-Man, Magnet, Gamers, Cruiser, Apocalyptic, MC Network, O'Connor, Zidwak, Gexy, Minecraft, and Mike Gaming. So thank you guys so much for suggesting light bands this week. It is made by Ruan. Ron? Ron, maybe? Juan? I don't know. I don't know how to, know to pronounce these things. This plugin does work in 1.9, 1.8, and 1.7. It is designed for the UUID system, so that means that if your players change their names or anything like that, they will still be banned because it's tied to their UUID and not their username. It also has a really slick web interface which is not needed to run the plugin you also don't need a database in order to run the plugin but you do need a website if you want the web interface that runs php5 and has a database mysql to it it can work in bungee cord to the effect that you can just plug it in your plugins folder for bungee cord and run it you don't have to link it up on all your servers but you can and just point them all at the same database if you want if you want to share a database with another server maybe like you just want to share the same bands i don't know you could do that as well but no database is required you can use the built-in sq light as well it also features i think this is a really cool feature you can roll back any actions by any staff so maybe you have a staff that did a bunch of stuff that you don't like you can just roll back their actions so all their bands all their temp bands mutes kicks warnings all that stuff gone so cool you can also purge the history it keeps a hit rolling history of all the things that has happened so cool so let's get into it i got a little bit of a different setup here so let's see how this goes so you're going to see that i'm going to be i'm going to be doing these from evil doppelgamer in the upper right corner on to me so you can see what happens what the person sees but we want to do ban and then we can do s so that means that the end user or i no, this means that other players aren't going to see the notification that you've you've uh banned them but people with light bands dot notify dot silent will still see it you can do capital S, then nobody will see it. It'll only be visible in the console, which is really cool. But we're going to keep that there. And then we're going to do, uh, we're banning me. And then uh, time. So we're going to do uh, 10 seconds. Reason being a punk. And there we go. So you can see that. Uh, all that stuff is configured in the config so you can see that you can put in all the stuff you can put the date you can put the who banned them uh, reason it's so cool you can modify all of this stuff and then you can put in your appeal all that stuff so then we can go ahead and then just reconnect and we're back so once again that's pretty much the basic of it um, if you ban them and then don't put a timeline in there it's just going to be infinite so uh, you'll have to do slash unban and then their username in order to unban them. Well, they're not banned right now. So what is some of the other stuff? You can mute players if you spell it right. And then uh, if you don't put anything there, it's going to be a default reason. So we're going to be mute for advertising. And there we go. And then you can unmute them. And then you can kick them for the lulls. There we go. And then that's all they get is kicked there. So then they can reconnect. And then they're back. All right, what else do we have? We can do history of the target so we can see if they've had any warnings or anything like that has happened. You can warn them. Stop it. Stop eat. And then you can see that they have worn and then it'll expire in seven days. So you can also set uh, for all of the mute, worn, kick, all that stuff. It follows the same scheme So if as the band. So uh, you can do the S here. Then the brackets mean it's optional there. And then you could do the target. 
and then the time once again this is all optional if you don't specify a time it's going to be indefinite and then a reason you don't need to specify a reason if you don't it'll be a default reason it can be all set up in the configuration file which is really cool there's a whole lot of uh, items out there you can do staff history history now uh put that on my own self. You can see all the stuff that has happened in the back. You can roll back any of the stuff. You can prune history. Now this is gonna happen for everybody. It cannot be undone. Uh, actually prune history is going to be done for a specific target. And then we're gonna do one day. So now if we do history, cause for Christ, nothing has happened um, except for the warning will still be there. You can see uh, IPs of you see all the IPs of each user, and then you can see that uh, both myself and Evil Doppelgangler are using the same IP, so you can check all that stuff. You can check ban of any users, which not banned. You can see the last uh, UUID of the player, if you want, and then the target name. Uh, you can also clear chat, which is really cool. So then it just clears all the chat, um, and then if, people have lightbands.notify.clearchat, then they'll be able to see that notification. And then you can give some users lightbands.clearchat.bypass so your moderators or whatever, so then it won't clear their items. You can see the ban list, which there's no, nobody on there. Now, this is kind of the cool thing. You can also then just turn off the chat for the whole server, so toggle chat and then do that again, and it's gonna to toggle it back on. You can do mute chat, so it's just gonna stop all the chat um which causes op so he bypasses that but uh mute chat the other thing is let's do this let's uh deop cause deop cause for christ now you can see this is i think this is really cool you can lock down the server so nobody can join unless they have a specific permission node in order to join so you can do lock down and then testing and there we go server lockdown active please try again later and then if you try to join you're going to get the same thing and then to get that off we're going to do lockdown end lockdown has been deactivated so now then they'll be able to reconnect which is very cool i love it so that is pretty much it for the commands. There's a whole lot of other commands. I'd highly recommend going ahead and looking through the commands and permissions in order to modify any of the permissions and commands. It's a very, very long list of permissions, so I'm not really gonna go through it. I know that the, some of them are on by default and some of them are not, but you basically wanna pick and choose those and put them in your permissions plugin in order that your moderators or whoever can bypass chat, commute, ban, kick, whatever it is that you wanna do. Let's take a look at the config file before we wrap this all up okay so here we are you can see we got our server we're actually running 1.92 right now but we're going to hop over into the plugins folder and we've run light bands in here you do need to bring use a permissions plugin that's pretty much the only requirement in here so we're running this not the bungee cord way so if you want to run this the bungee cord method you would plop this in your bungee cord plugins folder and then start your bungee cord and then modify it would basically create this plugin folder in your bungee cord and then you modify anything in there just like you would with a regular server now there is kind of a little bit of an issue so you can't actually run toggle chat or lockdown using that method um, but you don't need to install jars on any of the servers just your bungee cord and then all changes are global and then uh, other plugins can't actually interact with light bands. If you want to kick off mutes, all that stuff from another plugin, you can't actually do that. The other thing, the biggest thing is permissions then are handled on Bungie Cord and not on individual servers like Permissions X or Group Manager. You'd have to set up your permissions file on Bungie Cord to give your certain users access to different kinds of commands. But it's really cool that it's just all inclusive. Your, the other method you can do is just put one of these jars on each one of your, your servers and point them all at the same database. And then that works as well. So 
Uh, we're gonna open up and take a look at the messages really quick. You can modify anything in here. You can modify the format. Maybe you don't want the year to be first. Maybe you're an American and it's month, day, year. Maybe you're everywhere else in the world and it's day, month, year, whatever it is. You can also change uh, the band message format as you saw on that. You could change the band, uh, all of that stuff. It's so cool in here. Uh, you could change that url for the appeal i love it when authors offer this stuff so you can really make this plugin customized to your server it's very cool so i'm not really going to go over it but uh you can kind of scroll through it it's just modifying if you want to change any colors any of the names here's the duration stuff in there um the durations are the seconds minutes hours uh, years, all that stuff, days. So here we are taking a look at the bungee cord stuff. So if you want to use the bungee cord, you want to set it to true, and then the b band players will be kicked from the bungee cord themselves. So if you're not running this on the bungee cord plugin folder, you're running on each individual server. If they get kicked from that server, it'll just boot them back to the lobby. Unless you have this set to true, then it's going to kick them off the server completely. You can t turn the sync on or off if you don't want it to sync across the servers. You can, um, you know everything else is pretty self-explanatory i love how they um the authors got great documentation in here now you can change the server name so if you have a server network you probably want to change the name in here so it's easy to see where the bands are coming from and all that stuff now here's where you kind of set up your database options by default is sqlite that's the single file option in there but you can change this to be MySQL and then point it at an address with the username, password, database, table prefix, all that stuff. And you can point all your servers at the same database in order for them to sync all that stuff across, which is really cool. Here's your default durations in here. Mute max one day, round down true, mute enabled. So what this does is once there's mute uh, someone's muted all of this stuff is going to be muted as well a lot of plugins when you mute a player they'll still be able to whisper and send mail or something like that to other players which is kind of really annoying here's your default warning expiration in here notify all that stuff exempt now here's another cool thing if you're going to go from another plugin a uh, banning plugin to light bands you can actually import all your data in here using this you just set up which plugin you're importing from you want to set your uh sqlite if you are going to use that or if you're using my sql set that to false otherwise you're going to try to import it into sqlite you can also import from a default minecraft server maybe or a vanilla minecraft server if you set this to vanilla it'll import there or if you're using um just essentials that's the same thing it just uses the vanilla banning essentials does so if you're using essentials going to this that's what you want to use for importing the information and then this is if you're using that if you're importing into sql light importing from an sql my sql in here this is where you're going to put that information and then once that's all good and go into your server and you run light bands space import space start and it'll start importing and it'll tell you if it fails or succeeds or anything along those lines. I think that's so cool that the authors put that in there. Not really gonna touch on anything else. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. Um, and you could just read the comments in there. If you're not using Notepad++ to view your configure files, I would highly recommend that you do that because it makes it a lot easier. So let's hop back over into the game and wrap this all up. Okay, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that and hopefully you like this little bit of a different format this week. But Lightbands is a really cool plugin if you're really on the edge of buying it. I think it's a really great plugin. It doesn't require any database, but it has a lot of flexibility in there. And if you run any problems, you can always send a note or post on the spigot page if you run into any issues but i feel like i've definitely helped you guys get started i love the fact that you can run it on a bungee cord i haven't seen very many plugins that will just run out of that plugins folder so it's really cool to see some of them using that so let me know what you guys think hopefully you guys found it helpful and let me know if there's any other plugins that you like to do i'll capture those give you a shout out like i said this is cause reminding you guys all enjoy the game god bless oh.